guys have seen the videos, but are you enjoying them? Only 3% of the viewers are subscribed. More subscribers means more time I can justify putting into the channel. So if you like the content, show some love. We're so close to getting this thing on the road and it's so tempting to fire it up and ride it down the street. But one of the more important aspects of owning these older BMWs is proper valve adjustment maintenance. Sometimes you'll hear these older BMW motors referred to as sewing machines. They're referencing the audible sound the valve and the rocker arm makes when they connect, which does actually sound a lot like a sewing machine, and it's perfectly normal. Since I don't know when the last time this particular engine was serviced, it's better just to get out of the way and have peace of mind knowing everything is good. With the lack of maintenance, valve gap will close over time and can result in serious damage. Case in point, these basically had zero clearance when I was adjusting them. For reference, the gap you measure is the gap between the rocker arm and the valve stem when the engine is at top dead center. You want a gap about 0.15 millimeters on the intake valve and 0.20 millimeters on the exhaust valve. So on the right side of this bike, I was having issues with um, getting enough adjustment within these valves. You know, I was worried about valve recession. So I took off the head to check the valves. Everything looked okay to me. Remember this point of innocent bliss. Uh, I might take it back apart, remove the valves, check the seats, but we'll see how it runs for now. Another issue I ran into or I noticed, or the guys on the forum noticed was these uh, rocker pillows were on backwards. I'm gonna take this head off too, just check everything, check the valves, check the pistons. And uh, before I torque everything back, I'll put these on the right orientation. All right, now to be clear, I'm back on the right side of the bike. The side where I mentioned I was having issues getting enough gap clearance. This is the perfect time to talk about valve recession because boy, does this cylinder have it. Essentially, there are a lot of things that can cause the valve seat to recede into the head and these particular models are known for it. It isn't something I can fix here. This requires the head to be shipped to a specialized shop. Again, I don't need to get into the details because I'm not an expert. Basically, this is an ideal. Here's the bad head. Pause. Enhance. Here you can see a small gap between the valve seat and the head. This is valve seat recession. Here is the good side for comparison. So with that discovered, I set my gaps, which were still technically in spec, and continued on cleaning the carbs, knowing that soon I'll be pulling that head back off and setting it off to get fixed. And now everything's back together. I don't think I've mentioned this yet here, but I did swap over the newer valve covers for a couple reasons. The first reason is the crash left both the peanut covers torn open, and I found these newer styles for much cheaper. Another reason is they're a little bit thicker and harder to crack if and when that bike is dropped. This screen has only gotten worse, and I'm worried about water getting inside the housing. It's a pretty simple job, and now I can clearly see inside. Now, this leaves us at the last big purchase I had to make for this bike. Sourcing a wheel for the back. Here's why. So within the wheel, there's a little cassette. And the cassette consists of bearings and spacers. And that needs to be preloaded before it's put into the wheel. Uh, so to ensure there's no gap within that cassette. Uh, and whoever was in here last, uh, they didn't, I don't think they set the preload right. So that created um, just a, a gap big enough to, for it to wiggle around within the wheel. And over time, that wore away within the wheel. So now even when I put a correctly preloaded cassette into the wheel, uh, there's still so much room, the wheel just wiggles. So <clears throat> the only way I could really fix that was just to buy a new wheel. These rear wheels aren't cheap, but I still feel like I've been extremely lucky on this gamble of a bike I purchased for only $600. So I'll end with this shot because frankly, I didn't film much after it. The next video will be the final video in the series, so stay tuned. I'll be going over all the smaller projects I didn't film and the future travel plans I have for this bike to really put it to the test. Thanks for watching.